Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my 34 week pregnancy update. When I sat down to film this video, or actually before I sat down to film this video, I was thinking to myself, man, I am not gonna have hardly anything to talk about this week because it just seems like there wasn't really anything going on. But in actuality, once I sat down and started typing all of my notes on my phone, I actually came up with a lot of stuff to tell you guys for this week. So. Hopefully this video isn't too super long. I want to try and keep it short. I do have to go grocery shopping and make dinner for tonight. So that is on my list of things to do. So I don't want this video to be like an hour long. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and just get into it. If you're interested in pregnancy updates and you're interested in following along in my journey, I only have a few weeks. <laughs> I only have a few more weeks left, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like this video as well. So let's go ahead and just get into it. So by the time you're watching this, I will be 34 weeks. Right now I'm 33 weeks and six days, so tomorrow I will be 34 weeks exactly. And so I'm going to read you just a little bit of what my bump app says. So it says that baby is as big as a butternut squash, which is about 17.7 inches and 4.63 pounds. So a couple weeks ago, he was measuring at 4.5 pounds. So I think he's actually going to be a little bit bigger than what the app says. But I have another scan um, in a few weeks. So I will find out then how big he is. So I, I have a feeling he's a little bit bigger than average. So it says, my baby at 34 weeks, baby's recognizing and reacting to simple songs if you're singing them. If you're not, start. Baby may find them soothing after birth. So I haven't sung any, like, baby songs, <laughs> I guess, so to speak. I mean, I sing all the time in, like, the shower and in the car, but that's, like, country music or pop music, and I'm sure the baby's kind of like, what the heck is this? <laughs> so maybe I'll go ahead and just sing, like, I don't know, nursery songs or something. It also says, baby's also urinating about a pint a day. At less than two months to go, baby weighs in at about 4.2 pounds to 5.8 pounds and measures about 17.2 to 18.7 inches. Watch what you say. Your curious baby is listening in to your conversations at 34 weeks and might enjoy a lullaby or two. So go ahead and sing to baby. I always find it like, I don't really, we don't talk too much to him either, which we probably should. Um, I just, for some reason, think that it's kind of odd to be talking to my stomach, but that's what they tell you to do and the baby recognizes your voice and baby recognizes dad's voice. So I think we probably should start talking to him. At week 34, you might breathe a little easier since baby may descend lower into your pelvis and give your lungs some space. Of course, some babies don't do this until the day they are born, so we're not making any guarantees. The pitfall of this descent, of course, is even more pressure on your bladder, so be prepared to make even more trips to the ladies' room over the coming weeks. Sorry about that. My dogs are dachshunds and they like to bark. Um, okay, so I will go into a little bit, well, I guess I'll just go into it now. So, about two weeks ago, my colleagues actually said that I have dropped. And I didn't really notice it. Um, my mother-in-law said the same thing, but again, I haven't really noticed it. I don't feel like my lungs are getting much more space, and I'm sort of going to the bathroom at a normal, like how I've normally been going to the bathroom. So I haven't really had like an increased trips, increased trips um, to use the restroom. So like you can tell right now, I'm like getting out of breath. So I don't know if he's dropped or not. I do know that he's head down, um, but I just don't really feel like he's sort of down yet. Dropped, I guess I should say. So I don't know. I think that we still have quite a ways to go. I know they say that once baby has dropped, you can give birth anywhere from a few days after that to a few weeks after that, but honestly, I feel like we still have quite some time to go, so. So it says, my body at 34 weeks, blurry vision created by a combination of hormones, fluid buildup and lack of sleep, fatigue. Now, if only you can sleep at night. I'll get into that as well. Constipation and hemorrhoids, make sure you're getting plenty of fiber. I'll get into that. 
Swollen ankles and feet, put up those feet. As baby prepares for arrival, you might feel pressure down in your lower pelvis and even more frequent peeing. So I'll get into all my symptoms. So about a couple weeks ago, I think it was almost a couple weeks ago, I had another ultrasound. And as you guys know, since I had an increase in one of my proteins in my blood, when they do my blood in the first trimester, um, I've been having frequent ultrasounds every six weeks. So he measured at 4.5 pounds and that was at 32 weeks. And I have an ultrasound picture right here, the little 3D, 4D pictures that they do of baby, which are so cute. Excuse me. I think he's starting to look more and more like me. At first I thought he looked a lot more like my husband and now I think he looks a little bit more of like a mixture of both of us. So I think he's super cute though. He's just all squishy up in there. <laughs> so I also was supposed to have a couple weeks ago my 32 week OB appointment. So um, <clears throat> that day I had the same, I had the ultrasound appointment scheduled and the OB appointment scheduled at on the same day. So I went in and I told the lady that I was here, you know, tried to check in and she was looking at her little list and she just kind of like wasn't saying anything. So I was like, hopefully my appointment is today. And she said, oh, well, I don't see you on the appointment list. Go ahead and go back to scheduling and see, you know, what the issue may be. So I went back and of course she said, oh, I don't have you on our calendar. I don't even have you on here at all for any appointments in the coming weeks. And I was like, well, it's in my phone. <laughs> it's, you know, scheduled for today, which was Thursday at 410. So I don't, I mean, where would I get such a random day and time? You know what I mean? And I don't normally take the appointment cards because once I make my appointment right there, I put it in my phone just because it's easier. It shows up on my phone and I don't have to like dig for a little paper card or anything. So, like I said, I don't know where I would get like a random day and time for my OB appointment, but apparently they didn't have me scheduled. And she said, oh, well, you know, doctor left for, um, for the hospital. So maybe they were going to call you and tell you that you wouldn't be able to be seen today. Well, I never got a call either. So I think the lady just ended up not putting me in her calendar by accident, but she's rescheduled my appointment for a couple days later and she gave me one of those appointment cards and when she handed it to me she was like now don't lose this and I was like lady <laughs> don't mess with me right now I was totally right on my appointment time and day and you are the one that totally messed it up so that kind of irritated me and um, my husband wasn't able to make that appointment and so I called him and I actually started crying <laughs> probably because of the pre the pregnancy hormones, but we live 30 minutes away from all of our appointments. So to have to drive 30 minutes, basically just to say, oh, sorry, we didn't get you in our calendar and to blame it on me almost was very frustrating. And another frustrating thing with this um, OB office, and like I totally love my OB, he's great, is they don't call you the day before your appointment time at all. They don't call you the day before. They don't call you 48 hours before. They don't call you the day of. They just don't call you. And it's kind of frustrating. Like I love those reminders, even though I put them in my phone, like I told you guys, those reminders are kind of like, um, reassurance, I guess. So it's kind of frustrating. And like I said, especially because we have to drive 30 minutes each way, it's 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back. It just gets, kind of annoying. So anyway, so we rescheduled it and it was for Tuesday of last week. And so I showed up and everything was fine. They had me in the schedule and everything. And he checked my weight and I didn't get my weight um, at that appointment, which was almost a week ago. But I did weigh myself just today and I weighed about 161. So gaining a couple pounds a week, which is totally fine. I mean, it's, well, not a week. It's probably a couple pounds every couple weeks. So it's probably like a pound a week. Um, but like I said, it's totally fine because the baby is growing. So that is reassurance for me. 
Also at that appointment, so um, they do like the normal thing, they take your um, weight, they take your blood pressure, and they take a urine sample as well. Um, he also checks to make sure my uterus is at the stage where it should be at this certain time, and he always says everything looks great, so that's awesome. And also what he did was schedule a non-stress test. So because of my slightly elevated um, protein, certain protein levels in my blood tests, they want me to do non-stress tests um, twice a week up until I deliver. So I had my first non-stress test last Friday, which was just a few days ago, and everything was good. So what they do is they hook you up to a monitor that monitors your contractions, and then they hook you up um, they use another monitor and they monitor the baby's heart rate. So basically what they're looking for is um, an increase. So they look at the baseline heart rate for the baby and then an increase in the heart rate with like every contraction, I guess, so to speak. Um, and the increase in the heart rate has to stay steady for I think like 15 seconds or longer or something like that before it goes back down to the baseline heart rate. So um, you do that for about 20 minutes and you also monitor when the baby, when you feel movements. So every time you feel movements, you click a little button. Um, and like I said, you do that for about 20 minutes and if the baby doesn't move within the 20 minutes, then they'll go a little bit longer. Um, they'll go to like 40 minutes. And so when the nurse or doctor or whoever she was called to, um, they hook you up to the monitors and I think somebody like in triage can see the monitoring as it's happening or something like that because she called over to another nurse or another doctor or somebody that was at the hospital and she said, hey, you know, how is bed four looking? Which was me, I was on bed four. And I heard the lady go, oh, bed four is beautiful. And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> because I mean, even though you, you have like this gut feeling that everything is totally okay, having a non-stress test twice a week up until you deliver is, um, I mean, I guess it's still kind of a little nerve wracking. So when people say, oh, looks beautiful or looks great, you know, never been happier, stuff like that. It just like makes you breathe a little easier. Um, but I mean, having these ultrasounds certainly helped just to make sure that the baby is growing the way that he should be and um, like to speed and stuff like that. And my doctor also told me that with the increase in the certain level of protein in my blood, with that slight increase, he said he's never seen anything out of the norm happen during um, pregnancy or after pregnancy. So basically, it's just for precautions and it's okay. It's something I have to do. So the, no the next non-stress test is tomorrow morning. And then the following, I think, is Friday. And then I think they go every Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday. Now I want to go into a little bit of the symptoms that I've been having um, since the last update. Um, I guess it's not really since the last update. It's sort of just kind of been happening, you know, throughout the third trimester. Um, I don't really have too many. Some of the grosser symptoms is I'm having a little bit of diarrhea. Um, most of the time it's pretty normal or my stools are pretty normal <laughs> sorry if you don't want to hear this by the way if you don't want to hear this you can just click out <laughs> but it's pregnancy and it's it's normal it just happens um so anyway a little bit of that and otherwise it's been pretty normal i don't i'm not constipated um i don't have hemorrhoids yet which is I'm super happy about. Hopefully I don't get them ever during this pregnancy or after pregnancy. I know they say if you don't have them during pregnancy you can get them afterwards because when you are giving birth it can cause a lot more stress down there. <laughs> so hopefully I stay hemorrhoid free. That would be just awesome. Just the cherry on top because I've been having a pretty easy um, pregnancy so far. So I am tossing and turning at night a lot more often. Um, it's just a combination of things, a combination of trying to get comfortable. I have a little bit of restless leg syndrome, which is just my legs. Like I can't get them 
to stay still. They just always feel kind of uncomfortable and I always have to be moving them and making sure they are... They just... It sucks. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, it's hard to go to bed with your legs, you know, feeling like they have to constantly be moving. So sometimes I'll get out of bed and I'll do some stretches or something and sometimes I'll try and like massage my hip area because that's where it feels like it you know, hurts in the hips and then it kind of radiates down into the legs. And so that sort of stinks. Um, yeah, I'm trying to go to bed a lot earlier. Last night I got into bed at like 8, 8.30 and ended up falling asleep around 9. So that was great. Um, I wake up for work at about 6 o'clock, give or take. So that's a pretty good amount of sleep, even though I do wake up a little bit during the night. Toss and turn. And then I also have to go pee because, you know, that's just normal. I think I finally am starting to feel Braxton Hicks contractions. I don't, I didn't really quite know, you know, what they felt like. Um, people always explain it to me and a lot of people have Braxton Hicks starting in the third trimester. So I think finally the other night I was able to feel them. So I was laying on my, excuse me, I was laying on my back, I think, which I know you're not supposed to do. And then I flipped over to my right side and I did this kind of quick. I probably should have taken it a little bit slower. But once I got on my right side, my stomach tightened and I felt like a really large pain that, like underneath my stomach, if that makes sense. Um, sort of like in my pelvic area. And I didn't quite know what it was at first. Um, it kind of took my breath away. I wasn't breathing. My face got real tight. Um, and then I just sort of told myself to relax and then breathe through it. And once I did, it went away for the rest of the night. So I didn't get any more. And then um, that same thing happened when I flipped over to the other side. I think I got another Braxton Hicks contraction. And then the same thing, it, it was real painful. Um, I couldn't really breathe. Face was all nice and squished when they tell you that you probably should relax. Um, so yeah, so I think I finally am starting to feel those. So I was getting a little worried. I'm like, oh great, you know, am I gonna go through this whole pregnancy and not really know what a contraction feel, or a Braxton Hicks contraction feels like. Um, so yeah. Another pregnancy symptom is I feel like my feet are getting larger, um, both longer and wider. Only two pairs of shoes fit me right now, my um, Birkenstocks and my expensive flats that I have. So all of my other shoes, all of my heels, um, wedges, all of my flats, my cute sandals don't fit. And it could be because of swelling, um, but like I said, I also feel like they're getting longer too. So um, I did read that that is a common symptom and sometimes it doesn't even go away after pregnancy. So you end up having to buy a whole new shoe wardrobe, which <laughs> honestly, I don't, I mean, a lot of women be like, yes, new shoes, you know, I need some that fit. But honestly, I like the shoes that I have and I liked my shoe size. It was seven and a half. I feel like it was not large, <laughs> but not small either. It was just like the right shoe size. And now I feel like I'm going to be like an eight and eight and a half and ugh, just kind of have larger feet, I guess. Um, so yeah, it kind of stinks that I have to get, well, I don't know yet, but I might have to get a whole new shoe wardrobe. Um, they do say sometimes you know, your feet don't go back to the normal size. Sometimes they do. And the same thing with your fingers. Sometimes they don't go back to your pre-pregnancy, like ring size. Sometimes they do. So I'm kind of just waiting that out, obviously, until after I give birth because I don't want to size up my wedding ring if I don't need to. So for now, I'm still wearing this silicone ring. And hopefully after I give birth, I can wear my wedding ring and my engagement ring um, again because I really miss it. So for stretch marks, um, I'm not sure if you saw in the last video, but I do have a few underneath my belly button. For those, I'm using Arnica gel. Uh, my mom gave it to me and I googled it and apparently it really works wonders for 
reducing the color of the stretch mark. It says use it three to four times a day and I'm trying to use it as much as possible. Um, and it does actually seem like it's working already, which is great because I don't want, I don't want them to get darker and I don't want to get more, you know. Also, I am drinking red raspberry leaf tea. I'm drinking the traditional medicinal kind and I got this off of Amazon. Um, I bought way too many. <laughs> I think I bought like six or eight packs and there's like... 16 packs in a pack if that makes sense so I actually didn't realize how many I was buying off of Amazon I just clicked the add to cart and you know bought it and they came in this big old package and I was like whoa I am not gonna drink that much up until my pregnancy but basically it said that red raspberry leaf tea helps um, promote uterine health during pregnancy so apparently um, it can be consumed safely, obviously, during pregnancy and can decrease the length of labor and the number of interventions used. So it also says red, red raspberry leaf also seems to help prevent pregnancy from pre or post-term post gestation. So basically delivering too early or too late past your due date. So I do not want to go too late over my due date, guys. So I'll drink as much tea as possible. Um, I wouldn't drink it in the first trimester, I think they say, um, but second and third trimester is totally fine. I started drinking it in the third trimester. I think you're supposed to drink like four a day, which is a lot, um, but I try and drink at least, at least two a day. So I still feel him moving around a lot, which is great. You always want to feel your baby moving. Um, I have a little bit of a funny story. So I was laying in bed one night and I was just kind of laying on my back just relaxing and um we could see the baby's i think maybe his hand move like across my stomach it was like he kept going back and forth and literally that's all you could see move was like this piece of his body across my stomach and it was just the craziest thing like my husband i was looking at it and he's like oh my god like that is so creepy and He's, he's just a man. <laughs> but um, it really does just look like a little alien is inside your belly just like trying to break through, you know. Um, so it just, it was kind of funny. I was laughing hysterically. Um, but it's always fun to see the movements and to feel the movements. That's definitely one of my favorite parts so far. This past weekend I had my baby shower, which was super fun. Um, I ended up having, I don't, there was maybe 50. 15, 20 people there, which was really nice. Um, it was small, but you know, it, it was nice. I had my family there. I had some friends there and uh, my mom's good friend Stella put the baby shower on and she did a great job. She um, did fun games. She had a diaper raffle. Um, we had a cute cake there and cupcakes and food and it was just, it was really nice. So um, you probably would have already seen the baby shower. I did like a tiny little vlog. The vlog is probably only about five minutes. Um, so you probably would have already seen it by now. So you kind of get the idea of how the baby shower was. But and I'm sorry, my voice is getting super raspy because I'm talking a lot. Oh my gosh, okay. I have no battery left and my camera died. So I have no idea where I left off. Um, so I have to go super quick. Um, my my parents, my husband's parents have been super gracious in helping us get a ton of baby stuff and we couldn't be more thankful for that. Um, so I just want to say thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who could help us provide for our baby and it's just super wonderful. Um, Wednesday I have a CPR class. Thursday I have my breastfeeding class. My next OB appointment is the 29th and hopefully at that time I can be put on disability so I can go on maternity leave by November 12th. Um, so that is that. I want to show you the baby bump hopefully really quick before my camera dies. Okay guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm struggling making this video. So right now I am recording on my iPhone because my camera died and you guys know that I was really trying so hard to finish the video for you before that happened. Um, so, okay, let's show the baby bump a little bit. 
Okay. <laughs> this is so difficult. Okay. Here's the baby bump. <laughs> From the side. And... From... From the side. From the front. And from the other side. And then... Naked belly, which now you can see all of my stretch marks. Which, honestly, they look worse on camera than they do in person. Um, but this is what happens, guys. This is pregnancy, unfortunately. So there's the bump from the side. So my window's open and a ton of neighbors are out right now because the weather is just so nice. <laughs> so they're probably like, what is this weird pregnant lady doing? Anyway, so thank you so much for sticking through this video with me. It ended up being super long and I just kept rambling and rambling so I apologize for that. Um, if you were able to watch towards the end, I really appreciate it. Um, I will stop rambling again and just let you guys get on with your lives. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. I will see you guys very soon. Bye.